All right, guys. Second fight on the main card. I gotta say, I'm really pumped up for this one. Not only am I a good fan of Dustin Stolzis, but I'm curious to see if Rodolfo Vieira can actually right the ship on what is his current UFC career. The reason I say that is if you go through all of his fights and you watch them all, first of all, if you bet on Anthony Hernandez like I did, raise your hand. Because kudos to you. I truly believe that that was one where you had to give Anthony so much credit for his durability and heart in his previous fights. Even if you look at the Park fight, where he was actually getting beat up on the feet pretty badly, he locked in a submission out of absolutely nowhere. And when you look at Vieira's fights, even going into that fight, the guy has been tired in almost every single fight and been rocked in the first round in every single fight. Even my man Safravik Safra, before he started cheating like his old self, was able to rock him a little bit before Vieira started to run away a little bit from him and reset getting the takedowns, working ground and pound, etc. Safarov tried to grab inside the gloves. My man always, you know, trying those little tricks. But even in the Oscar Pioca fight, it was just, Pioca is a, is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, is a Brazilian Jiu -Jitsu black belt in his own right. But obviously we always talk about levels to this shit and that kind of thing. But the man held his own all the way till basically the end of the second round. And it was very interesting to see that if his striking was even halfway to the average ufc fighter he might have been able to do some real damage in that round in that fight but that's the perfect fight to take into consideration when you want to evaluate vera for all his positives if he's not getting beat up if he's not taking body shots if he's not spending a lot of time on the feet trying to figure things out move around work for those takedowns a bit more he doesn't get as tired. And I think in that fight, you did see him have a bit more success because I feel like his cardio is primarily based for rolling and BJJ type of, you know, exertion versus standing on your feet, taking a bunch of blows, including body shots, and also trying to land your own. I think that's where he really struggles. And if you look at the way Hernandez was just able to piece him up on the feet first and then really tire him out. I mean, Rodolfo was basically out on his feet for a lot of that, man. Just so tired. And if you go watch that fight ever and you see in between the first and second round, that might be the most tired I've ever seen a fighter going into a second round to the point where they might have even considered stopping that fight as a camp because there's just zero chance to believe that he has the energy to kind of keep going in that fight. So for me, you look at a guy who was seeing lines like minus 700 and all those things, but going into the Hernandez fight, there was already clear paths to victory for Hernandez, and it was just so open because if you can last a round with him and do damage on the feet and you're a pretty good grappler, chances are you can kind of last and get your own success in there pretty quickly, and that's exactly what Anthony Hernandez did. So when you think about Dustin Stolfis, who at one point was the second-ranked middleweight fighter in all of Germany, I mean, the guy's got the skill to make a difference here. He's a purple belt in BJJ and so you know the black belt versus you know Rodolfo's uh debut in the UFC that's a bit of a toss-up in the air you know I'm curious to see how well he does on his back against a guy like this but like I said man a lot of UFC MMA based BJJ practitioners have been able to find success against him either before getting tapped or before they tap out Vieira so I'm really enjoying the idea of a Muay Thai style grappler like Dustin Stolzfus taking on a guy like Vieira because not only is his striking going to be deadly, like man, he trains with guys like Sean Strickland at Syndicate and his grappling is already there. And so when you think about the best fighter that Vieira's potentially faced so far, I don't even think it might be Anthony Hernandez. It might actually be Dustin Stolfes. But you look at Anthony Hernandez's body of work. You know, he almost, we've got fights against Kevin Holland kind of thing. That's where you actually have to chalk up, you know, where do you stack up Anthony Hernandez and Dustin Stolfes? Because those are the reasons I thought Anthony Hernandez had a great chance to win against Vera. Now, in this case, we don't have much to go on. You talk about the Dano Contender Series win for Stolzfus, where he was able to get the slam and basically dislocate the man's arm for an injury-type victory. But before that, he was in guard and pretty much holding his own. But that's also something you want to try to figure out, because if it's that easy for him to get to his back, then maybe Vieira can actually have his way with him. The trick to this Vieira fight is very much keeping it standing for as long as possible. Easier said than done, I'm sure. But he just gets so much more tired not grappling. 
it just seems like he's willing and able to exert so much more energy as a grappler versus a stand-up MMA fighter. And so if Dustin Stolfus, who was in a dogfight with Kyle Dawkins, is able to keep this standing very long, I think it's going to be an absolute barn burner for him because it's just he has all the skill on the feet to make this a, a straight dogfight. And if he doesn't get taken down early and has the skill, even if he does, to kind of keep himself in the fight, get to the fence, get back to his feet, it's going to be tough. Now, the thing with Vieta is so much size, right? So I truly believe if he does get on top of Dustin, it's going to be tough for him to get out of that. Uh, he's just has, he has so much top power and you saw it in the fights where he was successful. You know, you talk about the fights like the Pyokas and the Safrovs, like that's where it came from, you know, not too much exertion on the feet, was able to get to the ground pretty quickly. And then slowly but surely, even that Pyokta fight where the striking wasn't there, finished in, you know, late in the second. If you compare it to all the other fights, it looks like a completely different fighter because he didn't have to use energy on the feet. But against Dustin, he will and the cool thing about Dustin is you look at the Kyle Dawkins fight I mean that's his debut UFC fight against the guy who was just coming off a loss against Brendan Allen Brendan Allen is fighting you know top 10 top 15 fighters now and Kyle Dawkins is basically one of my favorite prospects now well on his way after fighting a guy like Phil Hawes so when you think about quality of opponents and things like that it's just really interesting to see where this fight can go line wise because we've just seen Vieta be this huge, huge favorite in all of his fights because those two UFC wins, despite so many areas where he was in danger, kind of spelled for him to just be a 2-0 UFC fighter going into another fight. But like I said in the previous breakdown, when you look into some of these fights, I mean, I don't think you could ever make Vieta minus 700 favorite in any of the fights, even looking at his debut. So for me, despite all of the accolades as a BJJ practitioner in Brazil, there's a lot of levels to the UFC MMA game, and it looks like he's playing catch up later in his life. So without further ado, let's take a look at the lines. I would be shocked if Vieta's coming in again as some minus 500, minus 600 favorite. It just wouldn't make sense to me. I think that Dustin Stolfus' grappling game and his love for grappling should have him in this fight. And frankly, he's going to be a far superior striker to Vieta. And Frankly, he could potentially be the better striker of all opponents that Vieta's even faced. I think Hernandez, you know, puts up a good fight heart and uh, durability wise, but the technical side and all that stuff, I think Stolzis has a very good chance here. So let's take a look. I mean, you clearly know where my uh, money's going to go if this is a huge underdog just to give it a shot. But wow. Okay, guys. So, I mean, not exactly the minus 500, minus 700 favorite we've seen in the past, but Rodolfo Vieta, man, opening as a minus 259, and now actually, you know, getting a bit lower. Betway, for some reason, is still keeping him at a minus 275, but across the board, he's getting closer to a minus 230. I rarely throw out sights, but even Pinnacle has taken him all the way down to a minus 210, and I, I truly believe this is a much closer fight than these lines suggest, and it almost seems like Vegas is making the same mistake again. You just have to judge how good of a grappler Stolzfus is. And I think the striking is what makes him good enough that if he can just push, 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 push the pace in that first minute or two, he's already going to slow down Vieta, which makes this line really, really weird to look at. But again, the perfect fight for you guys to consider laying live. Don't even pre-bet this fight. This is a fight where the lines are so drastic that if you notice that Dolson Stolfus is actually fighting success early in that fight, man, there's a chance you might be able to get that at a pretty good line given what the opening lines look like. But, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I'm not going to look into this more in terms of a pre-bet. I think the size in terms of just girt, like width and stuff is going to be an issue. But Stolfus fights long and he's got good length with his strikes. So for me... Man, seeing him at a plus 195 on uh, betonline.ag where all the fighters are giving their promos, I mean, maybe that's what you consider, man. I'm just really blown away to see him at a plus 200 given the holes that you see in Vejeda's game. Now, if he's made all the right changes to improve that cardio at the later part of his life, sure, there's a very good chance that he deserves that line. But to me, this is way closer to maybe a minus 150, minus 170, if not closer to maybe even a pick em. I, I just, I've seen so many holes in Rodolfo's game that if Dustin loses this fight, it's actually going to be interesting to see where he gets next because Dawkins debut, Vieta, you know, if he gets submitted, I, it's almost like he deserves a bit of a break when it comes to, you know, 
tune-up fights or things like that, but I love this fight. You know, if the last one was a bigger chess match, I mean, this is just one of pure excitement. Can a guy who has good elbows and good strikes avoid the early grappling exchanges from a big-time BJJ superstar like Vieta? And then maybe even do some of his own damage. To watch Hernandez submit him, I'm not sure if that's something that is just an underrated experience, but that was phenomenal to me. And like the fact that it wasn't even on, on strikes just blew me away, which really makes this such an interesting line. So keep an eye on that one. I mean, of all the lines we've seen before, seen so far, this one is 100% the biggest disparity for me. So if you're a big fan of the Germans and you want to take some uh, chances on a big dog, I mean, I don't see a bigger dog to really take a chance on in this on this card so far other than Dustin.